be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory Glory to you, Lord. They came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and began to teach. The people were spellbound by his teaching, because Jesus taught with an authority that was unlike their religious scholars. Suddenly, a person with an unclean spirit appeared in their synagogue. The spirit shrieked, What do you want from us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked the spirit sharply. Be quiet. Come out of that person. At that, the unclean spirit convulsed the possessed one violently, and with a loud cry, it came out. All who looked on were amazed. They began to ask one another, what is this? A new teaching? And with such authority? This person even gives orders to unclean spirits, and they obey. Immediately, news of Jesus spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. He would be so humbled, so honored and touched by all your efforts. You were truly his church family, and he loved and respected all of you. So, I only have 10 minutes to deliver something impactful from this short, brief synopsis of a passage. So here we go. From the readings that we just heard, the Old Testament reading of Deuteronomy 18, where God declares he will raise up a prophet and the life-changing words of God will be in the prophet's mouth, to 1 Corinthians 7, where Paul is challenging the congregation of the churches in Corinth to choose a life devoted to God, to finally the gospel reading of Mark 1, where God's words, his prophecy from Deuteronomy 18, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their people, into whose mouth I will put my words, and that person will tell them all that I command. All of these are manifested through this interaction between Jesus and the unclean spirit. The people in the synagogue are amazed. They are amazed at the teachings of Jesus, and they are amazed at his confidence and handling the unclean spirit. And the word says, they began to ask one another, what is this? A new teaching? And with such authority? A new teaching? Was this really a new teaching? Jesus walking up into the synagogue that faithful day to proclaim the gospel may have seemed new to them. However, the teaching was not new. It seemed new to them because the words that God clearly proclaimed he would put into his prophet's mouth from Deuteronomy were God's words. God took those words and fulfilled the prophecy by making them a living, breathing word that faithful day at the synagogue. Jesus became that living word. It always amazes me that as that we as followers of Christ can read the word over and over and over again. And every time, it still feels like we learned something new. We began to question, 
Was this here before? How did I miss this revelation? And how can I apply this new teaching in my life? Or can I apply this teaching to my life at all? What is most challenging is when we read and pray multiple times and do our best to live the best life God would want from us, and it still feels as if we have fallen short. Until one day, you encounter someone that changes the way you view the word and the way you experience God himself. This person becomes a living word. They shelter the homeless, they feed the hungry, they advocate for the needy and disenfranchised, and they banish the unclean spirits of the modern world through their acts of love and generosity. This person is not just a spectator to Christ on the cross every week, but metaphorically, this person offers the dying Christ bread on the cross to eat and wine to drink through their acts of kindness to each and every person they encounter. This was my uncle. <laughs> he did these things. He did things that many did not understand. He did things that many did not agree with. He catered to man and animal alike. He was the most giving man that I knew. Some called him a saint because they realized most people would not give as much as he did. But we are all called to teach and preach the gospel of Christ. Not out of fear of some eternal damnation or obligation to rack up a head count of salvation of souls. But we are called to be living and breathing souls of God. We are called to show people, as my uncle did, how to love. How to love one another the way God loves us. No matter who we are or what our circumstances. We are called, as the Apostle Paul noted in 1 Corinthians 7, to live a life devoted to God. Juan devoted his life to serving God by serving others. I'm sure Juan has impacted each and every one of you in so many different ways. From that front row seat, <laughs> with his humor, his laughter, and his acts of kindness, which usually came with a very lengthy speech and a life lesson. <laughs> Juan's life lessons to us all, his teachings, were timeless because they came from a timeless source. And lastly, if I may, if I may leave you with one scripture that I require daily and I knew my uncle's love. From Mark 12, 30 to 31. And you must love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, <coughs> and all your strength. And the second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. I look forward to hearing all of your experiences and funny stories in memory of Juan. And my deepest, deepest condolences on the loss of two memorable people from your congregation. May their love forever fill this building and each and every soul here. Thank you. <laughs>